Okay. Now it looks like it's actually capturing audio. Okay, good. I switched the audio off of that one and onto that one. Well, that's the oh, more well, robust one. Okay. Great. There we go. I'm going to switch that over there. I'm going to take it a moment. There. And we're back over here. Okay. Now the one person watching is probably us. <laughs> but it's one of the things is making sure that we have it. Yeah. And let's see if it drops too much. If I come over here and get it going over here as well. Doesn't it seem to be slowing it down over there? Great. And this is actually running in advance of that one. Okay. Okay. So I will get it. Let's see if it's on. Oh, three, two, one. And this is actually running in advance of that. Okay. That one doesn't seem to be slowing down. This okay. one's over here. So, so yep, we're, li we're live doing it on both things. It's working this time. Okay. So I will now get you some clay cut. Here. Now that I've got all that going. Let me. Okay. I will now get you some clay cut. Now that I've got all that. Boop. There. We don't need feedback audio though. Yeah. Especially when we're basically listening to ourselves say things that we said two seconds ago. Yeah. And it's a little choppy, but it's looking pretty good. Okay. So I will get you the bit of clay over here. This is just mini, it's going to have a skeleton on it. There you go. To the hand. To the bat. Yeah. About two viewers now. Cool. Of course, one of them might well be the fact that I have it up for um well all the, the comments windows and everything there. Got two likes. So yes, we have it. We seem to have actually gotten the stream going. I have no idea if the, the viewer count includes our screen or not. I have no idea. So what we will be doing, for anyone watching there, is we're going to be throwing some black and whites and some, swir some swirlies to make use of more than one color of clay. After we just throw two regular ones here. To fulfill an order. Mm -hmm. So I've got black clay out. Now I need to get yeah. cute. There. Pretty sure this bag's porcelain, right? Yeah. That one was okay. porcelain. Uh, the hazards of having the box completely degrade. Oh, that's because we keep it outside. Yep. Oh, I always think it's cool when the little light bubbles go up the screen. <laughs> Get to see that when we're doing the unloading. So yeah, because phone. you're the camera person there. I'm the camera person here. Yeah. And I already cut you off the black mini. Oh, and 
going to move those handles. Uh. Uh. There, move that. Damn you. Stick to the damn bat. Not this bat, obviously. <laughs> There's always that bat. The things yes. just refuse to stick. Actually, now it's wet on the bottom. It's not going to stick to anything. Let me do this. So that was one of the really old icky bats anyways. Uh, yes, she I'm is drying off the underside of the piece of clay. Because, well, you want it to stick to the bat. There we go. I have no idea if it's bandwidth that's slowing down the image because we're streaming to two different places right now. We're doing YouTube. We're also using a restream surface so it's going to Twitch and to YouTube at the same time. So the stream's actually going out to three different locations. And maybe it'll work better once my graphics card's higher up because I have no idea how much this is chugging the, ma the machine. Yeah. Well, when you, you mean when you have two graphics cards? Yeah. Yeah. I get a new graphics card because mine isn't working with my new monitor that I got last year. Yeah. Something about 4K screen and not 4K compatible graphics card. Well, it took IT to months to figure that one out. Yeah. I got the 4K because I'm really farsighted and okay. I was having problems with the blur. So yes, and this is the basis of um, when we're doing pieces that are black and white because that is how they start out when she throws them. Half white, half black. Mini complete. <laughs> And now we have the pieces for the um, macabre border. And because the white is softer than the black right now, What's on the outside is mostly white. Should I cut it off with a lower um, quantity of white than black then? You can do various... A vary it some? Vary it. Because it also changes the possibility you know, for the those powder. people watching out there. And if you guys have any questions, just um, type them in via any one of the three things because if you type them in on YouTube or via Twitch it should actually pop up over there with some delay because I was playing with different options in the software okay, and I also need to cut you off some lug size pieces Yeah. so both halves will need to be approximately 13 ounces that's too much that one's 15 we're not making a mug that big that would be a good Especially considering how big of uh, porcelain throws. We have got and now eight reacts there. because it goes from being all mush covered and now yeah you can see that strong black and white pattern. Mostly white. Mostly white on I that said one. The, it was, the white was on. Get the Purdue off the bat here. So the So the pattern's sharp all the way down to the bottom. 
kind of like the one that's on the screen right there. We'll actually be making yeah. some with handles today. If anybody has a request to see what it would look like in a different shape. Yeah. If someone wanted to see a piece that's... You know, we've never done a goblet. True. So we've da -da. occasionally done bowl shapes. We've occasionally done plates. But most of the ones that we do are cups like this. There we go. See the pattern on the outside of that one. And they all come out different. Oh, yes. Particularly... Particularly when one of the clays is as soft as it is right now. Do, do one more, the smaller one. Maybe that one will dry a little bit. Yeah. Probably won't because it's raining. Yeah. So we have high ambient moisture. Yeah. And this is a bag of clay that was unusable last fall, last winter. Because it's Through most of the spring. Because, well, our clay is stored outdoors we since we. we we live in a wet and wet and area, so we can store it outside, and it's actually really good at keeping the clay a good usable consistency most of the year. <laughs> Iggy says, "I'll order goblet." Okay. And Catherine Stark says, "Do you have more firing problems with two kinds of clay? Um, with these, with this, it the two clays are ones that work together. It's not one. Yeah. If this you don't have the right kind of clays, they will." They will destroy they, themselves. They will pull apart. They won't dry right in the first place. They'll crack apart. If they have shrinkage rates that are too different, one not on color will shrink far more than the other. And it will. And it could. Self destroy. Your your best case scenario would it would would be that it warp horribly at that point. Yeah. More likely, it, you'd come out with chunks. So well, it could. looks like we'll be doing a goblet. Yes. Pretty. Let's see. I'll we'll cut you off a couple more of those. Um, a little, a oh, that's a cute little goblet. That's a mini one. It's going to yeah. be one of those globy shapes. Yeah. I'll do a bigger one, too. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, the As we work down in this bag, it should be a little less gooey. Okay, so that's 14 ounces, so I want to aim for it to be around 28. Oh, wait, nope. Mm, and to top see, it off, the pattern going to be on this one. For the pieces of clay to be similar in size, they're actually two different weights because one clay is more dense than the other, even when they're the exact same dryness, which they are not right now. Couldn't use this bag this past spring because it was practically entirely slim. But if we had a proper shop, yeah, you need place storage. We wouldn't have this problem. Yeah. Someday. Someday, because sometimes the boxes all will get too heavy, it too dried out, and I have to add water to the bag. There we go. I'm also trying to work da -da. down away from the top of the bag because it's the stickiest. Um, yeah, because that's the... That's Actually, you might want to just cut those two larger pieces in half, make those smaller pieces, and make the larger ones out of the next layer down. It'll probably be a little Why more consistent. Why don't you just try one from the next layer down and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Because you never know. Let's see. Mm. This piece is decidedly firmer because he was from like right there. That is 26 ounces. That'd be enough to make a very large cup out of just that. Okay. And, and I chunk this. That's too much. There's times where the clay just is on me. There. Those look pretty much equal despite the fact that the black chunk weighs decidedly more than the white chunk. Well, the dark clay is very dense. That's what makes it sturdy. And it's the clay that make the Viking cups out of. 
and the Latin sand miles. As you can see right here, this piece of clay is from a corner of the bag. You can just see how gooey that is right now. Probably just set that aside. Yeah, kind of like the piece that she just threw on top of the scale. It shares a go. Here we go. Is all sorts of goo. We're doing batches like this very like very often she does not finish off the bags because that would be that would be 50 pounds that's a bit more than what we generally do in a day every once in a while every once in a while generally Especially when you're making you large greek pieces yes then she'll go through 100 pounds in a day that's how i open my mouth and the words come out of come from her she talks faster than i do been this way for years. Ugh, I need to move that. You're goopy. You go there. There. It's a little nine ounce one. That'll be it. Make it the good And it's and type I'll thing. Put the right yeah, there. you get the whole um, thing with the bigger pieces because you have. Oh, um, that's one of the drier parts. Oh, that's a really soft part. So it's kind of like. It requires a lot of control. Yeah, and yeah, notice I'm not looking at it because it's more important what it feels like than what it looks like at this point when I'm throwing. And pretty trees to look at outside. <laughs> the grapevines are all dormant right now. And all of, and that last storm blew most of the remaining leaves off. Okay. Yeah. If you don't trim your grapevines for a year or two, you have these big monsters. Yeah. I'm dragging my fingers across the corner to see if I can get some of that extra goopy off. Yeah. So is this supposed to be a mug or a goblet? It could be either. Actually, cut you off the same amount of clay for either shape. I'm wanting to even out the walls. I'll have my my fingers like this. If I'm trying to pull them and make it taller, I'll be end on. See that way, I get a nice smooth wall. And this is why she has so much muscle development in her fingers. Yeah, I thought that piece was looking like it wanted to be a mug. I'll have to check to see if I have any uh, um, black handles pulled. Because yes, with these, when we put handles on them, kind of like the, the one in the photograph there, they generally just have straight up black handles. So I'm not sure about the structural stability of trying to, do, to pull a no, handle no. out of two clays. No. Because porcelain breaks a lot easier than the, the dark clay. Yeah and pulling the handle, they wouldn't end up so intertwined as they do thrown. Because one clay is softer than the other, they'll get unevenness at the top, uneven areas, which work their way up to the top, and then you just slice them off. That way, it's uneven. It's going to be a nice mug. Yeah. Once I actually look at what I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the fun part, cleaning the surface. Yeah, I have to wipe off my hands. That's the last thing you want to do when you're cleaning the surface after the reveal of the pattern is to add smudges. Most of the black will end up being visible on the inside on these back ones. Yeah, pretty much is what it is. Interesting. Well, 
don't know. Oh, you're, you're managing to scrape the inside of the lip? That looks cool. It does. <laughs> That's something you can't do on the minis. No. Yeah. Cool. Of course, if I wanted to do a... Did some glue on the finger here. And she can add some details back in. A little for a little white. Maybe I want more black on it. Where? Set that on the opposite end of that shelf because that one's going to get a handle. There's an empty bat up there. So there's two more um, mug slash goblet size pieces in it. Well, you've got the mini there. I'm going the mini down here. <laughs> I saw that it took a moment for it to grip. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, the piece will just kind of skate. Ooh, clouds are pretty. And this, yeah. Huh. You, uh, Catherine Stark, you did my setter set. Can you make the make a menorah in a slimmer style for next year? Yes. Yeah, we could do a um, menorah type object. Just uh, send us an image of what you're looking for in terms of style because I've seen a lot of different styles. Like, oh, we had somebody send us a photograph of one that's kind of like an oil lamp, so it's got that more boat shape but it flares out to the many points and has all the spots for the different wicks. That will be fun to make. Yeah, that's... Gotta have that done by 12 minutes. Yeah, I've really got to get to carving the master for that then. Yeah. Because with that, I have... We have it's to like carve the Greek oil lamps. It's the same with the Greek oil lamps. Yeah, techniques similar to the cookie stamps, except with one extra step. Because I have to effectively make the, the cookie stamp for the top part. Because carve a master for the top of it. And then uh, make a mold off of that. So I make my own press mold for the top of the oil lamp. Which is historically how it was done. That was how it was done. You can see the mold marks on the historic objects. Thank you. Got a uh, uh, cool for the description there. Yeah. As working with the goopier clays means that I'm less, far less likely to touch the keyboard than normal because, oddly enough, it doesn't really hurt the the keyboard that much. But it makes the keys hard to read. The goopy hands. Yeah. And then, that porcelain is really sticky today. Yes, yes it is, sir. Tell me about it. Really, is it sticky? <laughs> that one came out um, more the half and half. Actually, that one's got the really crisp spiral. Cool. So is that reveal the end yeah. of each piece. Because you have no idea what the pattern looks like until you scrape the goo off. There we go. Should I should probably no. put some of these guys. Gobble it. All the way up here. So we make these. There's generally lots of bats being used. And we already have platters drying up here. Just taking up some of the space. There we go. 
So after those two, do you want more small pieces or do you want some more of the larger ones? Well, we could do a couple more mug size ones. Okay. And maybe some of the ones that are would hold the like eight ounces? Yeah, the, 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 the ounce. moderate. Yeah. If you do the beaker sheet pairs. Eleven ounces. It's like to move. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to storm here for the rest of the week. Yeah. I'm fine the with thing that. Is, is we seem to be in the way of the bluff there, so we're not feeling any of the wind at all. No, which is nice. Yeah. Between the bluff to that side of us and then the King Range to the south. Yeah. We're protected from a lot of the, the winds in the area. Unless it comes from Unless it comes from a real specific direction and then we're the f at the mouth of the funnel, basically. always having to be careful with adhering the two clays, making sure we don't get air bubbles trapped between the two colors. Oh wow, you can see the spiral on that piece already. Yeah. There's always those ones too, isn't it? Mm. Bottom's really cool. Yeah. Mm. Go Gobletizing. Gobletizing. Started it with just being a cylinder, and now I'm going to color it in for the stem, and then make it a little more bulbous. Want to make sure you don't make the walls too thin right down where the stem is, otherwise it will collapse. Uh, yeah, and then you end up with a mini at best from what what's left of the clay on your bat. Seven ounces. Seven ounce piece. Seven ounce piece. Seven ounce piece. What I could do with this stuff that's too soft. I could leave it out to dry to make those tokens. trimming the lip of that even. So when she has to color in stuff at the base like that to make a goblet, oftentimes it has to go somewhere. Yeah. And which will cause it to go up unevenly. Far more like, yeah. There's more to cut off in terms of the little unevennesses that work all the way up and just kind of accrue with the top of the vessel. for the reveal. Ooh, that one's got some cool markings. Mm. I was wondering how you were going to scrape the stem. Mm. Mm. 
fish around in the drawer, see what sort of tools you can find. Sponges. Find something? No, oh, that one's angular. And that's as much cleaning as the bats ever get. There we go. Goblet. One goblet form. There we go. And don't forget it. You go on this end of the shelf. The pieces they get, handles, will get covered up overnight so that they have a chance to equalize and dry to the right consistency. So the top and the bottom are the same dryness. Because otherwise they crack. And it's just in handles don't um, adhere as well that way. And it's particularly important with it being made out of the two different colors of clay. Oh yeah. Even though they do have similar properties, they dry significantly different. Yes, but th similar. I think it's the same. Oh, no. No. Because <laughs> you can't be impatient with it. No. Otherwise, you end up with a ball of goo. This porcelain is kind of like thrown with cream cheese. It's soft, it's gooey. And this is a and soft likes to, bag of porcelain. And it likes to throw very thin and it's very light. Then you have the black clay here, which is opposite. It has very similar shrinkage and texture, but it's very dense clay. They're both the same texture when throwing, which helps. But if they're not the same um, consistency, like one's much softer than the other. Like today. It's going to one one will want to squeeze out and not play nice with the other one. So it's a matter of control rather than force. Anybody who's ever thrown with porcelain knows that it's all just all about control. And that, you say, be one of the major differences between throwing with a smooth clay like porcelain over a rough clay? Yeah. Like, like most of stoneware? A stoneware which you have to use a little bit more brute force. There's a little more forgiveness in throwing stoneware. That's why a lot of teachers, though, um have their students go with a generally a smoother stoneware but a stoneware nonetheless when they're something learning. that has grit in it because it will have more structural stabi stability yeah that one looks like it's thrown in a nice friendly shape there And it's relatively even in the bottom. 
Now it's got cool spirals in the slip pattern on the inside already. Pattern reveal. thing is, is some of the light brown slip will um, become semi-translucent. Depends on just how thick it is. If it's, yeah, if it's thin, it'll go transparent and you'll see the layers underneath it. And it, if it's just a little thicker, it'll just stay that mixed brown tone. You. There, there we go. go. Kind of. <laughs> I'm a light of a milk chocolate blob. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like chocolate mousse and it let go again. It's the bat because the bat was kind of gooey. It's a bad bat. That's one of the older ones. Yeah. Hey, you put you put two in the um the not you pile. The, oh, that yeah. bastard. And it's like, why do you have so few bats? And it's like, we still have those skulls in the other room that we're still sculpting. Mm -hmm. That's where the other bats are. I get to them yesterday. Yeah. Okay. It was a few days ago we. <laughs> you. We um, you threw the basis for a new batch of the drinking skulls. They start off as basically half thrown shapes like this, and then we'll sculpt them and make them, well, skull shaped. Got most of them sculpted, but we're making 16. Yes. Lots of skulls. Lots of skulls. And considering we, we were sculpted a full set of teeth on each one, it's a lot That's of teeth. isn't it? Nice steady rain. Yeah. Probably up to an inch and a half at this point. Since midnight. We've got a lot of rain in the winter. Yeah. The rain is pretty. Considering we didn't have practically any rain in October, we really needed it. Yeah. It's one of those things where nature seeks balance. Oh! Yep. You need rain? Here. <laughs> Let me give you rain. Here. At least it cleaned the air. Yes, yes it did. Which is good. So I can breathe again. Yay. We may have been nowhere near the fires, but we were still close enough that the air quality up here was nasty. Far from breathable for particularly for those of us, we, we fall into the uh, um, sensitive population category. Yeah. Particularly since we hit some really bad smoke while we were traveling earlier this year. As soon as that rain hit and cleaned the air, it's like, quick, load the kiln! Because kiln's outside, because you don't want the kiln off-gassing into the building you're in. No, it's not good. It's it stinks, but especially glaze firing. Well, yeah. Because it's you have all of the volatiles in the glaze burning off. Oh, they get cute little bus. I think 
that's the size that cleans up the easiest when you're scraping the goo off. You're the one watching it, so it's good. I becomes meditative after a while. Part of it is, particularly when you're throwing these, my hands get so gooey that I can't, you know, just turn and do something on the machine. There's water in the Thank you for getting that out. It dry so much better. Well, I'm putting one out the wrong end of the shelf. You, you go over here. This one will be a problem. Squeeze, squeeze. You. Stick. <laughs> your hands off it for a moment and I could see the the spirals already starting to form in the clay colors. Yeah. Oh. This still is, yeah, it's like the old spinner. I said that to somebody who was probably younger than you, Sarah, and they had- and they were under 25 and they were, what spin art? I'm like, God, is spin art no so longer a thing? Well, no, it wouldn't be. They had the little home version of it. Yeah, I remember the, the little home When art. I was growing up, you went down to Santa Cruz and we they did, had... We did spin art in um, classrooms when I was in grade school. Yeah, because there it's, were the people who had grown up doing it. It was at the Santa Cruz boardwalk. They had a booth that, you know, you did the... Because all you needed to... Do. The thing is, is... Would it... Would like a, I know this, this is also something you don't really see <laughs> much anymore. Turntable. Turntable. I was going to say a record player. But like, would the record player actually spin fast enough? I'm and I'm sure like, wait, what record players? I'm sure it would, especially if you have an old one that does 78. Ah, uh, yes. What were the, the oh. If we'd ever tried that with ours, we would have been in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah. Record player we had had been our cousins before us. And because all of your cousins that were are much older than you. to say that I keep checking out the basically the time lapse quality between um, the stream going through Facebook Live, which is maybe half second off, and the stream going through. Well, it's going through a restream service, so it makes sense that it has a, a bit of a delay. But watching it and just going, okay, how far is that behind now? Especially considering I can watch the progress of what you're throwing at two different stages. Hmm. Oh, that's turning out to be a nice goblet shape. Let me guess, that, l that piece is less squidgy than the other one. I think it was just sitting there longer, so the two pieces. They were, were not the most friendly to go together. They didn't really want to. No, no, I don't want to make friends with this other lump of clay. Mm, they didn't. They were so decidedly different. Yeah. Levels. The the black is at a really almost ideal consistency. It's e neither soft nor hard. The porcelain. The porcelain is on the soft end of usable. 
it'd be fine if I was doing it by itself. Either one, but yeah. Doing them together, try for more tricky. So it's okay. Be patient with it. Well, you really want to work together. <laughs> Let's not argue who is the better consistency <laughs> from your nice qualities. Now behave. <laughs> Try to get the two clays to hug it out. Yeah, there we go. Well, you want them to stay together and not go their separate ways. Goblet. And the thing with these pieces is that if they look like trifle oversized now, they they, shrink and they have a high shrinkage rate. Go Those clays, go it's what thirteen to fifteen percent. Yeah, that's pretty extreme. So, say, a vessel that's 10 inches tall, not that any of these are anywhere as close to that, but a vessel that was 10 inches tall would shrink by like an inch and a half. There's times where we get things requested that are to be a specific size. And that makes life interesting. Some clays have a very consistent shrinkage rate. You it's can solid. But like our our um, stoneware, because it has grit it's, in it. Yeah, it's got sand and grog. No, we don't. That's the soldate thirty. That's the soldate thirty. Um, soldate sixty only has sand. Yeah, it's it's like sixty grit. Sand sixty paper. grit sandpaper versus thirty grit sandpaper. Sand is well sand, but um, grog is ground up ceramic material. So it's yeah, got a I really coarse, that. crunchy texture. That did that wash basin for cave in? Yeah, that wash basin came out cool, but the high grit clays that also doesn't shrink as much. Have a low shrinkage rate. So while we made oh, that, boy, did I give myself sore muscles? Oh yes, you did. So there's that goblet. Those all the swirls are in the middle. Yeah. It's not that I didn't That's where the clay moved the most. Or where it decided that it was really going to get along despite what it wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> muscles doing. Okay. How many more pieces do you want? Oh. Because well, courtesy of the live timer, I know how long you've been throwing. So how long? About 46 minutes. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, probably do another half dozen. Okay. In addition to the one sitting or pre-cut oh. or including? How about including? Okay, so I'll cut you another five total balls of clay. Which means I cut you off six pieces. Oh, do you want to do a bowl? Yeah, I could do a bowl. We've, it's been a while since we've done a bowl. I could do a bowl in. Well, I don't know whether it could. I could try a plate. You have done a plate? I need to. No, I was just saying with the consistency of the clay. Ah, uh, yeah, well, this might be a good time for it because it that it'd be either be really good or really, really, really bad. bad. Because the porcelain's really soft. Yeah. So, people want to see a plate? Okay, if there's people still watching, do they? does anyone want to see her throw a plate out of the swirly? If I'm reading the watch right now um, correctly, we have one person watching. Oh, and it looks like we actually have... Okay, if the YouTube one is including it... Ah, yes, please. We have a plate to request. Okay. Okay, so... Because I build you the... The plate pieces are built a little bit differently. So for the plate, I'll probably want the 30-ish. So 
both pieces need to be 15. Oh, good. The, um, I'm getting to a slightly drier region in the bag. Oh, good. Bargain trip. Okay. So that was about 15 now. That's too heavy. Seriously, come back here. We did it checkerboard. Yeah, because we have more surface area. And this builds in more spirals from the get-go. Oh, we've got three people watching via YouTube. Mm, well then. Oh, I've gotten this. Oh, this laptop wasn't showing my tablet. Let's see a plate. Yes, we have. Okay. We've got people commentating on both places. Cool. Oh, cool. And it is, yeah, it is coming up on the screen, too. Because that was one of the things that I could do. Haven't figured out if there's a way for me to get the um, chat stream from Facebook to come up on screen yet. Because I'd like to do that. Okay. So this piece is 34. That's probably a good amount for a plate, or do you want me to trim yeah, it that down? that should be fine. Okay. There we go. Look at that one. Ooh, nice. As the porcelain is um, drying out, I'm getting better swirls. Because there is the spiral on that one. Came out real clean. So. And you can see where... There was more um, torsion, more stress in terms of drag. The stripes are much thinner. Okay. To the where it's wider. So she's got the checkerboard. Yes, there you there go. go. I know sometimes it's, you know, it's trying to jade. Yes. Judge the direction. Okay. Because yeah. even plates are based off a cylinder. So what I'm. Now she makes the pancake. Oh, good. It's cooperating. Yeah, well, this could have been a spectacular failure. Right? Yeah. If those pieces had decided not to get on, they'd be all over the bat by now. And it'd be a ball of, hey, look, it's going to be really marbleized. Got more people joining in. Yay, hello out there. You can already see where there's it's more. Hold it in on one side and then press down with the other hand. You can already see where the uh, um, make out in there where some of the colors are starting to separate out. And we can see it through this. This is where I need to have a sponge. So I don't leave finger divots in the clay when I'm opening it up. Because he wants a nice smooth bottom of the plate, not one that's ridged. Yeah. I have little fingers. Little sharp fingers. Rawr. I never shake hands with a potter. Yeah, shaking hands with a potter is a good way of losing your fingers, particularly if their hands are tired. Because they may not judge the um, full strength that they're crushing your hands with. Give somebody the hand of friendship. Here it goes from a flat pancake of clay to, hey presto, it's a plate. 
I do this that way I don't have the finger. Yeah. There's either that which I would get ridges or this which gives it a much smoother. There, there really is a sponge in her hand. It's just the same color as the clay the instant she uses sponge. it. Sponge. High tech sponge. It's flat. And there are the mud tools. Yeah, it's the mud tools brand. Yeah. They're what, kind of a, a yellow gray when they're new? Depends yeah, they're on which they, sponge it is. Yeah, because there's they the, have the, different the white ones are the ones with the finest texture. Those and then there's the porcelain ones. Those are the ones that are meant for porcelain or for other very smooth clays. And then there's the yellowy ones, which are the ones you generally use. Yeah, and then there's a blue one too, which yeah, I don't have any of. No, you've never tried to using the blue ones. As I recall, with their coarser texture? I don't remember. Because. As you said, you've never used them. Yeah. It looks like that was a good sized piece of clay. Really wonder what the pattern's like under there. We, are we revealing the pattern? Oh, that's actually making me motion sick. <laughs> And you know, looking away from the wheel isn't helping. I'm I turned from looking at the wheel with the spinny thing that's making me motion sick <laughs> to a pair of screens also showing the same thing. Yeah. That was clever, sir. Oh, that's a really cool look there. And she's scraping all of the slip off of the surface. Mm -hmm. Blah. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. So that is how it comes out on the plate. more of those. Do you want another plateish piece or no? I need to cut you off a bowl. Which, yeah, bowl. Again, they're the same size at pieces as what you're about to throw in. Uh, so I've got these pieces here. That bowl. And this one was one of the softer pieces. Of yeah, this. that was a piece that's been sitting there for a bit. That was more off of the top of the bag. not sitting level. You hear that? Taka 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 taka. Yes. So that. Yeah, because it could be a dirty bat pin, it could be uh, a um, dirty bat. A dirty bat. Yeah, there's times where it's just goopy water. Generally, uh, something I have to keep an eye on is whether or not she needs more water in her bucket. Because there's times where her water is, when the start, water starts having shape, yeah. she needs more water. Yeah, water should not hold the shape. Close. Speaking yeah. of water. Don't sit up. There we go. The next one, as it's from a layer further down in the bag, might be a good consistency for doing a bowl. <laughs> and then you have the ornery trimmings. pieces of clay. One was really firm and one was really soft. How many pieces are there? 
pieces. Um, you okay. have thrown 12 pieces. So I guess I... And actually we will be running out of space on the shelf before too long. Because so, what could, that could be the last one. Let's see. If we were to fill the shelf, yeah, I'd be able to get as much as two more pieces up there. Ooh, is that going to be a globy cup? Maybe. This one is just being on me, too. Because mm. the porcelain was really soft. What I could do is just pull them out to be my bowl. Yeah, I wasn't sure if the, the softer would be more applicable. Or the, oh wow, that one's... <laughs> That one is decidedly unfriendly. What you do with that? There's an unfriendly bit here. So you cut it off. Yep. So the more inconsistent the piece of clay, the more likely you are to have uneven pull up happening. Oh, will you do the, um, the, the Norse Graffito in the sides of that one? I could, yeah. Because he's got such a, a gallery there. He's got a lot of pattern. Just leave him like this. Doesn't look so bad. No. He's got a good bit of pattern. Yeah, this is why I have callus between those two fingers. So. Yeah, potters have so much weird calluses is thorough calluses. And someone said, your hands aren't bad, they're just work hardened. <laughs> That's, ooh, thank you. Yeah, we'd have space for two bats. Well, so I could, could be the last yeah, one. I could just do that as the last piece for today. Because after all, we still have skulls to sculpt and cookie stamps to make. Yeah. And, to and draw paint. To do that. Close one bag of clay, close the other. <laughs> and then we'll also get to wash our hands. Okay, there's something up uh, there. So, does what you make sometimes depend on what the clay decides to do? Yes. Yes, it does. Sometimes, there are sometimes it the piece of clay does not... It, it doesn't have properties that are conducive to the thing that you're trying to make. You can only force it to do so much. Sometimes it has other ideas. Like that last piece. It, the porcelain in it was really soft and it just didn't want to cooperate. Sometimes you have bags of clay that are just friendly They're the whole way, whole way through. And some that are just good for... Some of them, they're shapes. only good for one sort of shape. Yeah. There are some clay that, you know, you um, set out to do some large pieces, but if the, piece, if the bag of clay is either too hard or too soft... Too soft. It too, too soft and it collapses too firm and it's really, really hard on the potter to get it to throw the larger it's, shape. It wears out the hands and the arms. And the back. And your legs. And you have legs. come away with sore muscles in your legs from throwing in friendly clay. Yeah, because if you look at the brace. way she's sitting, she's bracing. bracing. 
because she is supporting her um, arms there with her legs and it's additional support for doing the compression. Because you want to brace your arms because that way it's more likely the clay will move than your hands. Except for this one which is just floating up in the air. <laughs> that one's going to be a pretty mug. Yeah, that one's got a really nice shape to it. That was, again, a piece from the more the middle of the bag of the porcelain. Yeah. Where it would pretty much do anything you wanted it to. Yes. It's getting closer to the consistency of the middle of the bag of the cassis. The corners, and in particular, the top layer of the bag, when you're taking the plastic down the side, is likely to be the most inconsistent. Either hard or soft. Either hard or soft. Sometimes, in really unfriendly instances, both. We all have a dry patch, and a patch that is nothing but goop. Oh, I should. Put, speaking of goop, maybe I should put that um, bit of porcelain goop back in the bag, rather than leaving it up here on the counter. Yes, whatever it is. twisted shut so they don't dry out well on us. Though I suppose that the porcelain is soft enough that it wouldn't matter if I didn't tie that one shut that well. Yeah. You're getting down to the friendlier part, don't let it Yeah, and I don't want to let the friendlier part dry out. Because that'll make me grumpy. You don't want me to be grumpy, do you? No, no, I, I no. like that one. And there we go. And that is the last piece for the day. Yes. Set this over here with the other pieces the that'll get tinted for the night. Hands. Yeah. Considering I have to actually touch my mouse and keyboard now. Well, thank you guys there we for go. thank you everybody for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you.